question. The Parsha is Parsha Tazriel, as you know. <coughs> and um, the Parsha basically speaks about two things about the dinim of a woman when she gets, gives birth. And then the major part of the Parsha is uh, the dinim of a Metzoira. A Metzoira, I'm sure you, you are familiar at this point. And, uh, somebody who has a, a, some kind of a discoloration on his skin <coughs> and he is declared Tome, a very severe level of tumor, uh, more severe than any other really uh, level of tumor. Um, I will try to discuss <coughs> and draw some insights for us from both of these parts of the Parsha. You don't also get it, do you think? What is it? The Taz. Taraz. Taraz. People also don't get it, do you think? No. <clears throat> Let me get to it first. Um, From the beginning of the Pasha, in the way the Torah describes the giving birth, and it says that this woman gave birth to a Zohar, an older Zohar. Zohar means a male. In, in Torah, in general, in Hasidus in particular, Discuss, there is a discussion, wide discussion regarding the difference between male and female, man and woman. In terms of avoid as Hashem, which is the, the primary thing that we are interested in, <coughs> the man um, is supposed to be something stable, strong, and the Torah actually gives a mitzvah to the man right in the beginning of the Torah, when men were first created, he has a mitzvah that he has to go out and conquer the world. You have to fill the earth, and you have to conquer it. In other words, Man was given with that, was imbued with that quality that he does not cringe, cringe, he does not get affected, he does not cower, hide, hide away. When he goes forward, he is what we call proactive. He seeks out, what do I need to do, and goes out and does it. He doesn't wait until things just happen for him. But he goes out and he, he pursues, he pursues his duty. That's the infinite man. A woman does not have that capability, was not given by God that capability. A woman was given by God a different capability. And the capability that a woman was given was that she is able to develop like the Yamada says, a man brings wheat into the house, but he doesn't eat wheat. What does he eat? Bread. And how do you make bread? From wheat. Without wheat, you can't make bread. But then you have to grind it, and you have to, you have to knead it. Knead it. You know what kneading is? Mix the dough. And then you have to bake it and make it edible. So developing inside this is something which the woman is capable much better than the man but to go out and conquer the man is capable much better than the woman (coughs) 
in terms of Avoidus Hashem, it means that, let's translate it in simple terms, if a person, one of us, sits down to learn, and it's difficult. I don't understand what it says. If I don't understand what it says, I have to start digging and figuring it out and maybe ask somebody and look up in a dictionary and look up commenta- commentaries and start searching for an explanation. Eh, I can't do it. It's too hard. That's not the attitude of Zoh of a man. The attitude of a man is, if it's too hard, so then that's what you pursue. That's what you go and do. Because you're supposed to conquer, overcome the problems. <clears throat> and then as a result of that, whatever you undertake to do, not only will you be successful, but what you undertake to do will be, will last, will be there. It will be established strongly, it will not waver, it will not fade away. <clears throat> In this passage, the Buddha says, the way the expression of the Torah is, and this is the Gemara comments on it, that the woman gave birth to a Zohar. So the question is, the woman, she's the weak, she's, the, she's not the one who gives birth to a Zohar. She should be giving birth to a Nekeva, because she is weak. And yet, it's the woman that the Torah relates to the Zohar. And we have this several times in the Torah. This hint, um, you may have come across, I'm sure you came across, I don't know if you noted it, if you remember it, where by Yanki Bovino, <clears throat> when, they, when the Torah lists all the names of his sons of the Shemotim, so in each one of them, it says, Bnei Rochel, Bnei Leo. <clears throat> Rachel's children, Leah's, first Leah's children, Rachel's children, Bilah's children, Zilba's children, always attributing it to the mothers, except by one. Which one? Dina. Dina, his daughter. By Dina, his daughter, it attributes to Yankif. Just the opposite of what we may think. So, there is a Nigla explanation to this, and then there is a, a, an internal insight, a deeper explanation to this Indian. <coughs> and that is, <coughs> pardon me, in a person's life, in each one, each individual person, when he comes to do his avoida, his pursuit of life, pursuit of his goal, pursuit of, of his duty, there are two ways, two circumstances under which a person works. One is he got excited about something. I mentioned one time in the past that I heard many times a person tell me, you know what brought me to Yiddishkeit, what made me follow and become a Frumerit? I was, <clears throat> I was affected and I was inspired by a Shabbos table. I visited somebody on Friday night and that was so inspiring I decided I want to have, have this beautiful life. <clears throat> That's very inspiring. 
but that inspiration lasts as long as you stay inspired. And as soon as you find you have difficulty that you have to overcome, as soon as there's something else that distracts you and inspires you the opposite, you can be inspired in a different direction. In other words, if you, if you get your, your path in life in pursuit only because he had <clears throat> an inspiration coming from outside, from elsewhere, there is absolutely no guarantee that you're going to be able to carry through under all circumstances. So this is one way, because a person gets inspired. He gets woken up. Then there is another way, another part of a person's life. The other part is that one understands, he recognizes with his own intellect, there is right and there is wrong in life. There is good and there is bad. And if I want to live a healthy life, if I want to live a life with a purpose, and fulfill my purpose in life, and have a real life, I have to pursue that which is right and that which is good. This is what's called self-inspiring. He's not inspired, because he knows he's got a lot of work to do. He has to start learning, and learn repeating something, and hazarding, and remembering, and then going over and over and go again. It's not inspiring at all. It's hard work, but it's self-inspiring because he understands, he realizes the importance and significance of what he's pursuing. We spoke about this one time before, and ev that everything, every posture that he that he learns, he is overcoming a, a an enemy. So he is conquering a piece of the world. He is in constant conquering. <clears throat> so then when when a person <clears throat> it is common practice that if you want to speak up but somebody else is speaking that you notify first that you want to say something I'm sorry. um These two modes of avoider are called in the Torah, contrary to what you may think, it's called in the Torah Ish vi Ish. Because Ish, Hashem and the Jewish people is Ish vi Ish. Hashem is Ish and the Jewish people are Ish. And Hashem has inspired the Jewish people when he took us out of Mitzrayim and he uplifted us with, with, with all the miracles that he had shown to us and so forth. But we all know that even though he even accepted it and we followed Hashem out of Mitzrayim, but then it was a very treacherous and very difficult path because on every moment when there was a difficulty, but it was by the Yamsuf, or it was when they didn't have food, or they didn't have water. Throughout the entire journey, they were constantly fighting back. Constantly, they, they, they would lose their, their, their strength. The reason for that was that they were, that their inspiration came from above. They did not work it through on their own to be inspired to understand and follow it on their own. As a matter of fact, this is, we spoke about it before, this is, this is what happened on Purim. Purim, the Gemara says, was another Kabbalah Torah, and a second receiving of the Torah, because on Purim, Eden accepted the Torah, not just because Hashem showed Himself to them, but they accepted the Torah on their own. 
There was not, nothing shown to them. They were a whole year in fear of losing everything, of losing their lives and, and being destroyed. And they stood steadfast because they recognized this is the only, this is the only truth. This is what they dedicated to. This was self-motivating. And they were self-motivating and self-decisive. This is what made it last forever. And this is what prepared the Jewish people for the Golos that followed after the destruction of the Second Mishnah which is our Golos, which is, we can't even imagine how long it is, 2,000 years. You would think Eden would be in Golos for 2,000 years. What would happen to them? And they were not in one single place. They were all over the globe, all over the world. And wherever they were, there was a moment where they were at peace, and then they were attacked. All over. And they, and, and they survived all of, these, all of these challenges. The worst, the worst possible, imagine, unimaginable circumstances even survived. Because the Golos brought out by Eden their own conviction. Not the inspiration, oh, I like it, I'm enjoying it. This is all trivial. This is not the real thing. The real thing is not I'm enjoying it. The real thing, I'm convinced this is the right thing. This is the true thing. And it works out through one's own intellect, one's own mind, one's own heart. That is what lasts. This is what stays with us. And this is what the Torah says. At Ishok is as a Isha. In other words, if it comes from bottom up, from, from one's own recognition, not because Hashem has aroused, has given us all the beauty and all the inspiration, but we inspire ourselves, then Yoldo Zohar, then she gives then the birth, what results from this the is, is a Zohar, something that is steadfast, that is strong, and that cannot be budged, and cannot uh, be, be removed from his path. Any obstacle you put in his way, he will go right through it. For those who know Russian, many of you are Russian, right? Um, okay, who else is smiling? Good, so you'll know, so you'll have others to understand. The, the, um, After the Second World War, many Polish citizens, Polish Jews, ran away from the Nazis into, into Soviet Russia. Soviet Russia was not exactly a heaven, it was not exactly a Gan Eden, but at least they were not in the, in the crematoriums. They said that they were saved. After the war, there was some kind of a deal made between Poland and Russia. And as a result of that, Russia agreed to let their citizens, the Polish citizens, go back to Poland. Many Russian Jews, the Babiches, found out about this. And at the risk, the, 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 the most difficult risk of life and everything, they made out false passports of that they are Polish citizens. They got Polish names and they went through the border into Poland with these false passports. It was an extremely risky thing. Several hundred families, ours amongst them, came through this way. <clears throat> There's no way that I can describe to you the fear and the risk that was involved. We're talking about a vicious, vicious, unscrupulous um, uh, rule. But they got out. <clears throat> and then they came, we came over, over here, Bar Hashem. We came to Mrebim. This was, you know, like a dream, a wild dream come true.
in, in the Russian, there was a song sung by, by, the, by the military. The military was, uh, they, there was a military song that was saying that this, this is a troop that everybody respects because they know how dangerous we are, that we are able to, to break through all enemies, all enemy barriers. So al Baruch and Chosi, the Rebbein Tzvi and Shemtov, adapted that song to us, to the Libavitches. And he says that everyone, the whole world is speaking about how dangerous we are, that we were able to cross the red border. Hmm. Did you hear that song? Did you ever hear that? Did you know that? How does it go? Huh? That's right. So, which means that we are a dangerous type. <laughs> this exceeding are dangerous. They are we are able to go through, to break through this border. It, it really takes, it, it means that we are really hardy. Nothing can stop us. And, and uh, <clears throat> this is, in fact, very true. And this is what we see, Yidin in general, and Hasidim, and Hasidim in particular. Nobody has to, you know, after Gimel Tamus, after Gimel Tamus, everybody was already beginning to say, okay, this is the end of Lubavitch. The end of Lubavitch. Who is going to inspire? Who is going to give him the strength? They were all proven wrong 100%, 1,000%. Because our young people go out and shlich us more than before. They seek out the most difficult shlich as possible. The further away, the, the better. The more dangerous here, they go to India, they go to China, they go to all kinds of Schwarzschild. And, 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 they, and they remain strong. They remain strong. They build, they build up the Jewish communities. Because they don't need to be inspired by anything outside. They are, so they're internally inspired. Nothing stops them. Nothing stops them. I know my own children, I have a son in California. California is, after all, is a civilized place, not, not India. But still, he is someplace in the south of California, he's in a little city. And from, you know, once a, week, once a month, now it's a little better, but once a month he gets a minion to dub Shabbos. Can you imagine? Shabbos after Shabbos, non minion, nothing. How can you survive like this? Nothing goes and goes and goes and oh, Hashem, things are of course improving, it's becoming better, but because we we uh, we do not need external inspiration because we learn Chassidus. The whole union of Chassidus, especially Chassidus Chabad. Chassidus Chabad is what the Alter Rebbe says, and this is something which makes it possible for every simple yid to use the intellect, the intelligence that Hashem gave him to reach into his own soul and to find his own strength to be able to carry through his avoid. He doesn't need, he's not dependent, so to speak, on outside inspiration. And when it's self-inspired like this, then it's real. Then it's real, then it's his own soul that's pushing him to do it. And it doesn't stop before any, any difficulty. And that's what Shad Yishuk is as when it comes from bottom up, then it becomes then the birth, the resultant the resultant um, person that builds from that is a real person. A person who will not will not sway the wind, no wind is going to sway him away and is going to follow his path and is going to conquer the, his world that he has to conquer.
a little bit more on this topic for us, since we are not achshid achshlichas, we are sitting, we are sitting and learning over here. <clears throat> in learning Torah, and especially chsidus, there are two levels. I'd like you to listen to understand this. There are two levels. The first level is that you learn to know and understand what it says in the Sefer, what is written. You know the translation of all the words. You know how to put the words together into sentences. You know the concept that these sentences t- talk about, tell you. And then you say, I know what it says here. That's the first step. I know what it says here. But that's not the end of it. The next step is that I personally relate and understand what it says here. Not I know what it says. I know the truth of what it says. I understand it on my own. How can I understand it on my own? Because I have an Ashona. I have a soul that knows the truth. And I, if I learn it deep enough, it, it begins to make sense in my own mind. This is something which I've discussed from time to time. And I'll give you a simple illustration that we'll all be able to relate to. When we learn, Breishis, Bora, Lekim, Zeshomayim, Vazorus, that God created the heavens and the earth. So first, you learn it like a challenge of oh, a piece of information. Where does the world come from? God created it. So now, somebody asks you, who created the world? Where does the world come from? God created it. Okay, so you know the answer. But what does it mean to you? What does it mean to you? That's the question. Do you understand the significance of it? Does that change your view of the world? Does that change your view of yourself? What does it mean? What's the difference who created the world? What difference does it make? What difference does it make whether God created the world or the world evolved from a monkey? What's the difference? That's what that's that's what we have to understand. This we have to this we have to have our own understanding. This is beyond what we are taught. This is something that we have to understand on our own. And, and sense the difference, the significance of it. Because there is a world of difference when you say that the world is just there, or it evolved, or whatever it is, or that God created it. If God created it, then it represents something completely different. Then everything has a meaning and a significance. Everything has a godly meaning, a godly message. And, and there is a responsibility involved. Both responsibility and also um, glory, so to speak, and real, real grandeur, real uh, beauty, real significance, a real meaning in life. It's a completely different view of life. This is the second type of learning and understanding. If one tries to understand things in this on this level, this is where he first begins to reach and touch his own intelligence. The other is only he's just memorizing what he's being taught. He is like a good a good computer chip that can remember what he learned. The real learning is when, it, when, he, when he brings in his own into, in intellect into it and he reflects what all that means and how it makes sense and how he couldn't think of it any other way. Like I mentioned to you also, the Rambam says that the understanding of, of God's creation of the world has to be, this is the laws of the Rambam, has to be in such a way that it's so clear to him that if he should think for a moment that there is no God, 
then the whole world vanishes. He, he then nothing can be. He can see clearly that that the world is is a godly creation, and if you take God away, you take the world away. It's not an add-on. It's not something separate. There's nothing else to see if you don't see if you don't see the the, the, the creation. This is the meaning of self-motivation, of reaching up into your own soul, into your own intellect, and and really relating to that which the Torah teaches us. Then it becomes real. Then we are sure that you are a man. You you become real. Nothing can shake you because this is your own understanding. This is your own your own insight. And in the final word, this is the real meaning of intellect. Apichsides lapitayr. Torah talks about seichel, that the human being has seichel. This is what we're talking about. Not just to memorize and to learn, to know what it says, but to actually personally relate to it and see, yeah, this is really true. It cannot be any other way. That's the real meaning of intellect. Let's move over to the other part of the Sedra. The other part of the Sedra speaks about Tsaras. Tsaras has very many different implications. On the one hand, it is a tumor, it is an impurity that, as I said before, the most severe type of impurity that there is. But Tzoyra is so tome that, if, like a mess, if it goes into a room, everything in the room becomes tome. There's no other tumor of a living human being like that. It can be Tommy, he touches something, it makes it home, but not that he goes into the room and everything <laughs> in the room becomes Tommy. There's no such thing. Amitsaira, by the Torah says, Amitsaira is not permitted to be within the community. He has to be sent outside of the community. He's not even allowed to live within city limits. He has to be outside of city limits. And outside of the city limits, Two mitzayroim cannot be together. They have to be separate. They have to be bothered. They have to be mamish separate, separated. Complete. We'll come back to it, but this clearly implies to you, implies that the mitzayra, in order for him to find atonement and to clear and to come back to, to where he's supposed to be, he has to be so isolated so that he has time to think and find what is doing in his own soul without any other interference. He can put point fingers on anybody. He can be distracted by anything. He, he allows, so to speak, he's, he has nothing else to do but to dig into his own soul, into his own thoughts. And that's how he gets cured. That's how you find you find skew. And we'll discuss it. On the other hand, when the Torah starts talking about Saras, the first word is Odom Kiyavoibisori, a man Odom. When he will find on the skin of his flesh a tzaraz, a discoloration, a white, a white spot. So, see this ask, after Rebbe asks, why does it say Odom? The human being, the Yid, has four different references in the Torah. Odom, Ish, Gather, Emish. Four different names. 
that all mean men. Enosh is the lowest one, Gavar is the next one, Ish is the, is the next one, and Odom is the highest level. Odom refers to the human being by his intellect. Odom, the word Odom means Adam al alien, that he is, sim- he is similar, he reflects the way the, the, the way things are about. This is the, the highest title. Odom Horishin is called Odom because he was a perfect man. And here, when the Torah talks about Saras, a person going into leprosy, going to this level of Tuma, the Torah refers to him by Odom. How can Odom be being so low? And to this, the Alternate explains a very, very important principle. When a person is imperfect, he's not perfect. He's got all kinds of internal shortcomings and problems. So then, his shortcomings and his problems and his his um, um, uh, impurities can hide within him. He can't even tell. It hides within him. He's not even he's not even sensitive to it. Because he it it fits with his entire person. When a person is Odom, he's internally inside is completely healthy, completely whole, perfect. If this person has any impurities, that these impurities get pushed out to the outside and they show up on the skin. What is the skin? The skin is the outside, the most external part of the person. Because internally, he is completely whole, completely pure and completely healthy. And therefore, this impurity gets pushed, pushed out because he has no room inside. It gets pushed out and it shows up on his skin. That's why the Torah first says, Odom, who is going to have a, a Be'er so it's a Ras? Odom, somebody who is whole and perfect inside. This is why, in fact, today, the Holy Ras is no longer prevalent because we don't have that type of a person that... that all impurities go out external, go outside, because internally he cannot tolerate it. Mm-hmm. This thing would have like blisters, lesions. Person- white spots, a white spot with white hair going out of it. This is what happened to me three years ago in Miami. No, I, <laughs> I was in Miami three years ago. And I thought it was some person. I'm sorry, uh, he's a perfect person. My skin turned white. <laughs> my, my eyebrow turned white. And, uh, no, no, that's, uh, yeah. It has to be, the skin turns turns deep white. The skin turns deep white. And within that, and on that white sub-spot on the skin, grows out two white hairs. You know, it's a uh, different thing. Uh, what about this one? But yeah. I'm just curious though. You always see that it's translated in a lot of in a lot of Hamashim it's translated as leprosy. Is it leprosy which has a spiritual cause? Or it's not it's not even the gay at all to call it leprosy. Because I mean obviously it goes on walls and it grows on, on and shirts too and they don't shirts and walls generally don't become leprous. Okay. So but I mean when it's it, when called a it's, right. It's it's, it's, it's something which is um, on the Ramban said that the whole thing of Saras is a is a miraculous thing. It's not a natural thing. And that's why, like you said, it can, can grow on the garments, on certain garments, and on the walls, mm-hmm. on the bricks. And you take the bricks out, you think the bricks are sick. No, you take the bricks out and put new bricks, and then it returns back. 
So it's not at all correct to, to, to translate Saras as leprosy. It's just like a... That's the, the only way we have to translate it, but it's not leprosy, that the common leprosy where the where it is uh, something is rotting away inside. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> So there are, so as I mentioned, so this Mitzayra, what is his, what does, how does he get cured, how does he get back to himself and, and cure this bit of impurity that still remains in him? First of all, I want to discuss about this impurity itself. <clears throat> and, and this is pertinent to us. Very often, a person reflects on himself, and if he is serious and honest, he finds many imperfections, many impurities. Sometimes a person thinks and reminds himself of this thought and that thought and that deed, and he becomes turned off towards himself. How could I have thought that? How could this thought have occurred to me? He is disgusted with himself. So one may think that he is so disgusted with himself that in fact he is really a disgusting person. How can I have thought of this? Therefore I have to be a disgusting person. We have to understand that is not the case. This is not the case. Because if in fact he were a disgusting person, he would not be disgusted by something disgusting. Anybody follow, follow this, this, this logic here? Somebody who is used to dirt, who is used to impurities, when you show him an impurity, he doesn't turn him off. He doesn't say, oh, no, I can't stand that. doesn't bother me. Who is bothered by something that's impure? Somebody who is pure. And even though it's his impurity, it's coming from him, so that means that he still is not perfectly pure. But he is generally is looking to become pure, looking to become healthy. And he still has impurities. He has to recognize these impurities. But in no way should that be turning him against, so to speak, against himself. No way should it, should it be discouraging to him and say, ah, I'm no good anyway, so might as well. This is what the Yitzhahora does. The Yitzhahora finds all kinds of different ways. And one really pious way, what pious means, pious, religious, you know, upright way. You're no good. So what happens? What's the next step after that? That he's no good. He tells him, it makes no difference what you do. So we have to know that's not the case. And if and if, if you feel disgusted by something that you yourself thought or did, that means that yes, you have to go and correct it. But that itself shows that you have a sense that you appreciate good things, appreciate purity. Otherwise, it wouldn't bother you. And this is what happens with this Mitzayra. This Mitzayra, who is so completely pure and completely perfect, that the little bit of impurity that came out, came right out of the skin. And he has to be sent outside of the community. <clears throat> and what happens when he's sent outside of the community? as I mentioned before. Then he has, a, he has a time and he has the duty to reflect where is this impurity coming from? How do I have it? How do I... Where is it, where is it rooted in my soul? And how do I clean this out? How do I get rid of it? And, that, and after, then, then after this exercise and this effort, he actually is able to come out of it.
the very fact that it shows up on his skin shows two things that he himself is really pure and then he has the strength and the ability to get cleansed and healed from that impurity otherwise he would stay inside and he wouldn't know the difference then there is another interesting halacha interesting aspect in Mitzoras It's altogether an odd thing. If a person has has one stain of white of a certain size, then he is tummy. If this stain of white that is stomach spreads out throughout his body, you learned it yesterday, right? Completely, Completely covered his entire body. Kuli hofach He's completely turned white. Tohir. All of a sudden becomes Tohir. Isn't that amazing? That really is amazing. It's all body? It's all body, yeah. You learn Pasuk Humash. Kuli Hafak Lavam. This Kulei Hafech Lovon has many implications, as you can imagine. We'll focus in on one on one point. Clearly, as we could see, that when a person has one stain of white and the rest of his body is normal, so you could, you could say that the rest of his healthy skin is going to cure and fight the impurity of the unhealthy part of the skin. And this is how he's going to come back to himself. But this person here is Kuli Hafech Lava. It's completely transformed. So there is nothing in his, on his skin that can now go and cure it. What happens to this person? How is he going to get cured? So we say he doesn't, he, he is immediately told him. That itself is a, is a sign of Tahara. How is it a sign of Tahara? <clears throat> so, for this we have to discuss briefly what is the meaning of purity on an impurity. In, in terms of our own mind and our own avoid. You know the principle that a person, when he does a mitzvah, he has to do a mitzvah l'shem shomayim. He must make l'shem shomayim. He has to do a mitzvah truly because Hashem wants me to do this mitzvah. Not for any other ulterior motive or ulterior reasons. So do the mitzvah because that is Hashem's will and that is the real meaning of the mitzvah. He learns Torah because this is Hashem's Torah. Not because of he wants to show off or accomplish anything. He wants to do Hashem's will. This is the chat that he's doing it purely. Purely means he's doing it with a complete truth. What is the value of this? The value of this is because this is Hashem's will. 
when a person has a personal in, um, inclination, a personal, what's called an ulterior motive, an, his own motive, then he is doing the mitzvah, but it's not pure. He does the mitzvah, but he didn't do it with full purity. There's something, something personal in this, some personal interest. This personal interest mixes into the mitzvah and makes it not pure. So, in order to purify it, he has to be put outside of the community. Where he is alone, he and Hashem is alone. He cannot have any ulterior motives anymore. Then he thinks clearly between me and Hashem. Nobody's going to give me covered. Nobody's going to give me money. Nobody's going to give me anything. This is between me and Hashem. And there, he removes this impurity and he's able, and he's able to come back. This is as long as, <clears throat> as he, that there is a little bit of impurity, and he is able, he is able to tell himself, I'm going to overcome it. I'm going to be able to overcome this myself. There comes a point where a person <clears throat> works so hard, it tries to overcome certain impurities, certain internal problems. And he works with all his might and he cannot overcome it. Raul Rebbe says, this was a little a while ago in the, in the Tanya. That when a person has law has Mashava Zoris, and what Mashava Zoris mean? Thoughts that don't belong. He's in the middle of davening, in the middle of learning. All of a sudden, he has thoughts that don't belong there. You know what Mashav Azores is. <laughs> Who doesn't know what Mashav Azores is? You want to translate for me? I mean, like from personal experience, the translation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the Alter Rebbe says, when a person has Mashav Azores, so there are certain, certain ideas, advice that the Alter Rebbe gives how a person should overcome it. Mashav Azores could be such that come to him in the middle of Dublin and say, and say, oh, how, come, how could he have done this and this and this? He didn't avail, you have to do tshuva. How can he come to Dublin for the Mabish and you are such a person? All kinds of different things that throw a person into atzvus, into despondency, into, into depression. Huh? That's Mashav Azar? That's Mashav Azar too. That's start for Dominic. Right. <laughs> and, and so then, and then eventually he can read himself of this and come, come to Dominic with Amir um, Akhir. Then the Alter Rebbe says, it's conceivable that it's not going to help him. And it really bothers him so deeply that he can't get out, get out of this Mashav Azar. So then he should plead to Hashem. That's what he says. He should plead to Hashem in his mind that Hashem should help his soul to come out of this impurity and to be able to do his avoid. That's what he says. This is this Metzorah that became white all over, the, all over his body. He can't, he, he can't do it anymore. He tried and tried and tried and he lost all, all his strength. So now, he's giving himself over completely to Hashem. He says, Hashem, we bring Shalom, you help me. Once he gives us over to Hashem, then it becomes all true from Hashem. It then becomes completely in Hashem's hand. And then automatically he becomes pure.
That makes him white, but he was white before that. No, he, no, no. He, that makes him white. When it comes to a point where he gives himself over, he says, I can't help it. And then he becomes all white, but this whiteness is, is, is a sign of purity in the country because he's, he's not on his own, he can't do it. It's completely Hashem's hand. When he gives himself over completely in Hashem's hand, then, then he automatically gets pulled out of all his impurities. So he's not white and then he gives himself he's not fully white and then he gives himself over. He has spots when he gives himself over. Yeah? And then the uh, the result of his giving it becomes artist. So this is a point that we all have to remember. You have to understand. We have our avoidance. And we have to do all we can with all our strength. Like we said before, we have to be a zohar. You have to conquer. And you have to fight. And never, never give up. And um, not to be dissuaded because it's difficult. We have to remember that we are just like a soldier on the front lines. A soldier on the front lines, if he gets scared from the enemy, then he is sure to be shot. The only way he can have any assurance that he will come out alive is if he's alert and he looks straight at his enemies and use his wits and know not to lose himself and, and to shoot in the, the way he has to shoot. And if he gets scared, God forbid, then, then he loses it. The same thing in our way. We mustn't get scared. We have all kinds of things we have to fight, never to get scared. And if it comes to a point where we see, I can't overcome whatever difficulty it is, I'm lazy. I can't get up in the morning. I can't, you know, or even simple things like that. We always, we have, we, we, we must then turn to Mabishan and say, Mabishan, help me. I have to, I have to get over this. I have to get over it. I can't allow myself to sink into this. We have to remember all the time that whatever Avoid Ayid does, Hashem is always with him. He's not alone. And if he and he can he always can help, can get help, Boshit can help by saying I keep it kill him, by giving a penny in Zdoke, and by asking Hashem like the Alter Rebbe says, asking Hashem for help. And then Miraculously, all of a sudden, the difficulty dissipates. This really, really is the case. This is how Eden lived. And then, all, all impurities just disappear and he becomes Tohesh and he's able to do mitzvahs and Abed Hashem and learn and daven in truly in a way that, that a Zohar does with full force, conquer his own, his own little world, conquer, conquer his own Yotzer Hora, conquer his, his um, obstacles and build up and grow up to be a, a man that can face the world and can build a real world. This is ultimately what we what we have to all aim at. To grow up and be a man responsible, being able to face responsibility, face difficulty, face the world, and not cringe. Cringe, cringe means get scared. go forward with it. We have to know 
that there is toiv and ra, there is good and evil. Good is a real force, is a real presence. That's a godly presence. Evil is a facade. But what's what facade is? Yeah? An illusion. It appears. It's not real. It's a very real, real illusion. It's a real facade, but it's not real. It doesn't have a real presence. And if we stand steadfast and we go forward, we do what we need to do without fear, then it simply vanishes and dissipates. It's an interesting Indian by the mitzvah, when the Torah speaks about even going out to war. And before they go out, before they cross the, 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 the border, they go out to war. So the Kohen, a Kohen goes up and speaks to the soldiers. Any of you learned this, Pasha? I'm sure many of you did. Later on in Pasha, a Kohen gets up and speaks to the soldiers. And he says to them, you should know that you are going to fight Hashem's war on your enemies. And you mustn't fear them, and you mustn't tremble, you mustn't get, get um, um, another expression of fear, shaken up. So Rashi on that part, on that part, in that, in that puzzle, explains the, the different expressions in the Chumash of fear. And he explains that these four expressions refer to different things that the, that the Goyim would do in order to scare their enemies. And what are they? They would produce all kinds of noises. They would make their horses, um, what's in the horse sound called? Nay. Nay. They would make their horses hit, um, bang their, their hoofs. They would, make, they would hit their, their shields and make noise. They make all kinds of noises. And each one of these noises is designed to scare and to weaken the, the, the opposition, weaken the resolve of the opposition. So the POSIC says, you should know, that this is only noise. This is nothing real. The real thing is the Koya Hashem that goes with you. They can only make noise. It's only a facade. It's not a real thing. The same is true regarding our own Yitzhah Hurrah. We get scared. We say, how am I going to overcome this? How am I going to, to um, be able to face the world and so forth? This is all empty noise. Because the real thing is, is the Koyach Hashem that we have. And if we go with that, and as I said, with personal conviction, and personal understanding, then we can cross and, and, and that whole facade dissipates. Nothing remains there. It vanishes. That's the, 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 the fact of it. Especially when you talk about our own personal avoider, everyone, I'm sure, had experienced this at one time or another. When he was concerned about one thing or another in the personal avoider, and all of a sudden he wakes up, it's no problem altogether. If he stood up steadfast to it. And the reason for that is, again, because it's like a Mitzayda. It's externally he looks sick, but internally he's healthy and strong. And ultimately the internal health overcomes the external little flash discoloration, and, and he gets healed. You just have to go and, and have introspect and think truly about his emuna, his faith, his belief, his conviction, and then he can go through it and, 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 and it all dissipates. So Hashem should help each one of us here 
we should face our world straight and do what we need to do and not cringe and not go go backwards, go forwards. And the Rebbe help will help each one to conquer his little world and build their, their, their little worlds into big worlds. And, we should, and then Moshiach will come and be able to so proud and look what I accomplished. You said that by having self-inspiration you produce a zakhar. You what? By having self-inspiration then you produce a zakhar. Yeah. How does the aspect, I missed it, Isha, refer to the idea of being self-inspired? Isha means you work milmat olamayla. Isha is a makama, work milmat olamayla from yourself. Everything originates from an inspiration from above, but you don't rely on that. You take it and then you work it into yourself. Okay. How you doing? Any news? It's so hard to do that. It's hard to go forward with this. I do computer. It's hard to do the application stuff. What? Like, as far as the school <laughs> and doing that. I mean, what, what do you want to do? You have to, 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 you have to